Now to someone who would like to swim under the Harbour Bridge. Mermaids are the stuff of childhood fantasies, but for this woman, the dream has become a beautiful reality. Lyndon Wolbert can hold her breath underwater for five minutes, and she's on an underwater mission to share the joy of the ocean. This real-life mermaid has come up for air. Isn't that a great picture? And she joins us now. Wow, Lyndon, thank you for coming out of the water to talk to us. When did this dream of becoming a mermaid begin for you? Oh, gosh, well, it really began uh, when I was very little. I always dreamed of being in the water as much as I could and growing up in a landlocked state in Pennsylvania in the U.S., um, it was tough sometimes to be near the ocean. But I grew up watching The Little Mermaid and Splash when I got older and uh, just really loved the ocean from a small age, even watching Jacques Cousteau documentaries. Your tail is so beautiful and, and it appears to be a working tail. How did you get it and um, what can you tell us about about it. Well, the tail is actually something that was one of the most difficult things I've ever had to create, uh, but I had the help of an incredible friend of mine who is a Hollywood special effects artist. Uh, his name is Alan Holt, and Alan and I, over a course of about seven months, created this 35-pound silicone tail, uh, which just beautifully moves through the water, really helps me move quickly through the water, and is pretty realistic. What do the um, sharks and the other marine life think of you? They must get a bit of a shock and wonder what's going on. Sure, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the nice thing about being a mermaid is that I'm free diving instead of scuba diving, whereas when you are in scuba, you're making all sorts of noise and blowing bubbles. And when you're underwater in a free diving atmosphere and you're holding your breath, you become one of the fish. And when that happens, things don't respond the same way they do when you're being loud on scuba. So I can kind of immerse myself with the creatures. Uh, sharks actually, in my experience, have been afraid of me because I'm about eight feet long with the tail on from head to tip of tail. And they, they tend to be a little intimidated because they're like, what's this new big fish in town and why isn't it blowing any bubbles? <laughs> oh, it's extraordinary. I understand that um, because of the experiences that you've had and the love that you have for the ocean, that you really want to spread the message of how important it is to keep it so pristine. Certainly. Uh, it's something that from the time, as I mentioned, I was little, I just fell in love with all things water, including the creatures in the ocean. And I find that children specifically are interested in that and find wonder in that. Uh, and if I can encourage children, which is really one of my big passions, to uh, acquire water safety skills, learn to swim, be comfortable in the water, and then immerse themselves and understand and appreciate the creatures in it, they'll naturally love and want to conserve those creatures in the ocean. We'd love to see you down here at our Great Barrier Reef. Is that something in the future for you? Oh, if anyone would like to invite a mermaid to come to the Great Barrier <laughs> Reef, <laughs> I will pack my tail and bags and be there ASAP. <laughs> um, and you don't have your tail there today, I, I understand. It's, um, it's getting its scales cleaned. Is that right? That's, that's right. I'm actually leaving uh, in about 12 hours for the Bahamas. And uh, I'll be down there doing uh, a story and working with some children about ocean conservation and di diving with some sharks and other creatures as well. Uh, so the tail, it definitely gets a lot of mileage. So routine maintenance is part of that. So we're, we're getting everything nice and perfect for the, for, the, uh, for the trip. How do you go about holding your breath for five minutes? Is it something that you train to do? Yes, uh, free diving and breath holding is something that should only be done with proper training and safety protocol. I've been really fortunate in meeting a lot of incredible world champion free divers who are setting records uh, every time there's a competition all over the world. Uh, people like Martin Stepanek, Mandy Ray Cruikshank, um, you know, uh, Kurt Kroc, who are really the pioneers in, in training and teaching free diving around the world. So I train, uh, I learn different techniques, and I also judge the sport of free diving or breath hold diving. And so I get this wonderful advantage of being immersed in that culture as well as learning the techniques. Well, you've done a wonderful job of achieving a childhood dream. It's a real inspiration. We thank you very much, Lyndon. Thank you so much, Layla. Maybe do you can. Thank you, Layla. Free diving is becoming very, very popular around Australia. And we have a top secret project coming up that Lyndon might just be interested in. We, uh, we should say in contact.